Floyd Mayweather is different things to different people. To some, he's Money Mayweather, who seemingly replaced the game of Monopoly's rich uncle Pennybags as the universal symbol of capitalism. To others, he's Mayweather the 21st century superstar, who's brilliantly orchestrated his growth into one of the most accomplished and most famous celebrities of not only his time, but of all time. And to others still, he's Mayweather the villain, who's okay with donning the black hat in or out of the ring, as long as that image stimulates pay-per-view sales. But Mayweather is also one thing to all people, and it has nothing to do with dollars. He's the greatest boxer of his era. Mayweather was a world champion at the young age of 21, and a four division titleist before he was 30. But it was his 2007 super welterweight showdown with Oscar De La Hoya that raised his profile to heights rarely reached by professional fighters. This was Mayweather's first time fighting above welterweight, and he weighed in at 150, four pounds below the division limit. For the first half of the fight, the bigger De La Hoya troubled Mayweather, scoring with jabs and furiously flurrying after backing Mayweather to the ropes. Down his pit, don't get in his ass. Don't worry about that. You do what you're doing. Uncle Roger's words ran true, and the golden boy tired late, while Mayweather managed to rally with right hands that rarely missed. The champions traded until the final bell, and while the decision was split, few observers viewed Mayweather's victory as undeserving. Just as De La Hoya had dramatically elevated his standing 11 years earlier by defeating the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez, Mayweather entered a new realm by beating De La Hoya. For the remainder of his career, Mayweather has never again been the B-side. You know, 10-time world champion at six different weight classes, he proved himself when he couldn't beat the best pretty boy Floyd tonight. Next up was a different type of challenge. British phenomenon Ricky Hatton was 43-0, a former titleist at two weights and one of the most popular fighters in recent history. In fact, for Hatton's challenge of Mayweather, it seemed most of Manchester had flown to Las Vegas to support the hitman. Hatton was the quintessential high-energy pressure fighter, and it took Mayweather three rounds to find the antidote. In the fourth, he settled in a rhythm, and his punches began to connect cleanly. It was one-sided after that. In the eighth and ninth, Mayweather's shots began to snap back Hatton's head. It foreshadowed what was to come as Mayweather honed in. And in the tenth, a checked left hook, one of Mayweather's signature punches, landed perfectly. Hatton showed his medal by somehow returning to his feet, but after another knockdown, referee Joe Cortez called a halt just as Hatton's corner was tossing a towel of surrender into the ring. Already the number one fighter in the world, Mayweather advanced to 39-0. Then, about six months later, he indicated he would fight no more. The retirement lasted less than two years. As far as welterweights go, Mayweather's on the small side. His comeback opponent, however, was a lightweight who was jumping up two divisions. Mexico's Juan Manuel Marquez was one of the best fighters in the world, an all-time great, no less, but he was impotent against Mayweather, whose timing and various methods of defensive wizardry enabled him to control every aspect of the fight. Mayweather's primarily a counterpuncher, but he can lead as well as Marquez learned in round two. Round six serves as a definitive illustration of Mayweather's defensive genius. He tucked his chin behind his left shoulder, negating Marquez's right hands. He elevated his right glove to block left hooks, and he created advantageous distance and space by moving his feet and manipulating Marquez with extended arms. The punch stats told a tale of utter domination. Mayweather connected with 59% of his punches. Marquez landed only 12% of his shots. Mayweather was in the midst of a four-fight stretch that included one future Hall of Fame opponent after another. In May 2010, he faced Shane Mosley, who at 38 was past his prime, but still dangerous. That became evident in the second round, when something unusual happened. Mayweather got hit and hurt. But his vast experience is often overlooked, and after being caught, he won every minute of every round. Better yet, as if to quiet those who criticize his defense-first approach, he came forward for most of the fight. Despite the early hiccup, 
Mayweather won by wide, unanimous decision. For some, Mayweather's remarkable dominance has been an endless string of immaculately constructed, but also somewhat monotonous rounds that have all been scored 10-9. That certainly wasn't the case when he challenged welterweight titleist Victor Ortiz, who was coming off the highlight of his career, a fight of the year win over Andre Berto. Mayweather was returning after a 16-month layoff, but showed no rust, easily winning the first three rounds. In the fourth, Immediately after Ortiz suffered a point deduction for what seemed an intentional headbutt, he embraced Mayweather, then forgot the most elemental rule of the ring, protect yourself at all times. Since knocking out Ortiz, Mayweather's won seven consecutive fights by decision. Ultimately, a champion is judged by the quality of his opposition, and in May 2012, Mayweather accepted a particularly tough assignment when he challenged the naturally bigger Miguel Cotto for a world title at 154 pounds. This was a real fight. Mayweather took control with a series of right hands in the fourth, but by the middle rounds, his nose was bleeding, not a sight we were used to, and Cotto was still coming. In the eighth, Cotto landed several shots to the head, and for the first time in years, there were rounds that Mayweather clearly lost. But Mayweather rallied in the 12th to cement a unanimous decision victory. Afterward, he told Cotto, you're the toughest guy I ever fought. Having signed a six-fight deal with Showtime and sticking to a two-fights-a-year schedule, Mayweather outclassed Robert Guerrero in May 2013, then fought a much bigger fighter, unbeaten Mexican star Canelo Alvarez. Would there be a passing of the torch? After all, Mayweather was 36, and at 23, Canelo was already 42-0-1 and an established champion. And if we needed a reminder of why his nickname was Money, well, Mayweather earned a record $40 million purse, and the fight grossed a live gate of $20 million, also a record. I have been in a lot of arenas since the 1980s for big fights. Few have been as electric as this one. Though clearly outweighing his opponent in the ring, Canelo foolishly tried to box with Mayweather. Canelo looking almost confused now. Again, he's, I think he's so frustrated, he's trying to lure Floyd in, and then he wants to throw a big counter, but it, Floyd's not gonna do it. Floyd will pot shot you all night. The fighters tentatively traded jabs for a couple of rounds, then in the fifth, sixth, and seventh, the quicker Mayweather began to connect with ease. And you see Floyd trying to take it to him. I think he wants to show the young man, listen, this is the big time now. You've never been here, let me welcome you. And now Mayweather beginning a tee off on Alvarez. Alvarez standing flat foot on the ropes. The jab to the body. In the second half of the fight, Canelo seemed to lose spirit. It was simple, he explained. I couldn't catch him. Double jab through the guard and that right hand. And what a sublime right uppercut up the middle by Mayweather. And on Saturday, September 14th, 2013, Floyd Mayweather has not lost a step. After 12 rounds, there was no question of the outcome. But somehow, Judge C.J. Ross scored the fight even, 114-114. How egregious was her card? She hasn't worked at ringside since. By the time Mayweather fought again, he was 37 years old, and among the questions being asked was, how much longer can he remain on top? For the first half of his May 2014 welterweight defense against Argentina's Marcos Maidana, the answer appeared to be, not much longer. A physically strong and often crude fighter, Maidana attacked relentlessly, throwing more than 100 punches in the first round. As usual, Mayweather was effective when in counterpunching mode, but Maidana simply outworked him. And with four rounds remaining, the fight seemed up for grabs. Mayweather finding his tempo and rhythm. And now a blistering combination culminating with the right to the body. In all, Maidana landed 221 punches, easily the most Mayweather had ever absorbed. But rounds 9, 10, and 11 belonged to Mayweather, and he secured the win by majority decision. Due to the competitiveness of the fight, 
Maidana secured a rematch. Whatever magic he had found in the first fight was gone, and Mayweather, staying off the ropes and frustrating Maidana with movement, scored a one-sided decision win. Maidana landed only 128 punches this time. For his part, Mayweather, having advanced to 47-0, appeared ageless. In Mayweather's world, the natural order of things had been restored. The biggest fight of Mayweather's career, and easily the richest fight in boxing history, came in May 2015, when, after five years of bickering, negotiating, and posturing, Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao finally clashed. With both boxers in their late 30s, maybe the fight came too late. Regardless, the showdown drew a record live gate of $72 million at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, and a record 4.6 million pay-per-view buys. As it turned out, it wasn't a particularly appealing fight, with Pacquiao unable to penetrate Mayweather's defense. With the exception of a brief segment in round four, when Pacquiao raged. There's a counter left hand that backed up Floyd Mayweather, and Manny Pacquiao going on the attack. Again, the high guard. Mayweather controlled both pace and ring geography. Pacquiao had won world titles in eight different weight classes, and he'll go down in history as one of the best fighters ever. But on this night, he was ordinary. For more than 20 years, that's what Floyd Mayweather has done to his opponents. Four months after defeating Pacquiao, Mayweather outpointed Andre Berto and then said goodbye. He was 38 years old, 49-0, and secure in his place as a ring legend. Now he returns to face mixed martial arts champion and outrageous and oversized personality Conor McGregor, who has never fought a professional boxing match. It didn't surprise me that Money Mayweather couldn't resist what promises to be a nine-figure payday, especially against an opponent who can't hope to match his skills. Mayweather is 40 years old, an unbeaten champion who's won world titles in five different divisions and firmly established himself as one of the best ever. A win, even a spectacular win, isn't going to impact his boxing legacy, but it will certainly impact his checking account. Floyd Mayweather is different things to different people. Both as businessman and boxer, he's carved a niche that separates him from everyone else. <laughs>